Welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. As you've seen on some previous videos, we've been experimenting with various railroad vehicles. The latest one I built was basically an electric go-kart or rail speeder using a 36 volt motor and a set of car batteries. Now it worked pretty well, but it was pretty slow, so we're going to see what we can do about speeding this thing up. Alright, we've got a faster motor, so we're going to slap this on the train and see if the thing runs any faster than it does with that geared motor we were using before. I'm going to swap out these uh, gears. This one looks like it'll work a little better with the uh, chain that I've got right now. Alright, now that we know that it works at home, we'll take the thing out to the abandoned railroad and see what it can actually do. Alright, rail cart, fast version, test one. Well, it's definitely faster, but it's also just as bumpy. I lost my air horn here. Now, since somebody always comments that I'm going to be hit by a train, and this is really dangerous, this particular track is completely a dead end that way, and it's completely cut off that way. There's a burned trestle, the tracks are all separated, you can't get a train through there in either direction, so there's never going to be any traffic on this line. In fact, they're going to rip it up and either make a hiking trail or a light rail someday. So it is completely disused, completely abandoned, not dangerous to ride this thing on it, aside from the inherent dangers of a homemade train. That being said, don't try this at home, don't do it on your local railroad track, don't do it on any railroad track that's active, or you'll die. We're starting to lose power. I've uh, been using these batteries for other projects, so they're starting to get a little worn out. I think we're going to turn around and head back to the car before I uh, get it stuck and have to push it home. Well, I'm going full throttle, but I think we're losing juice here. Yeah, the motor's pretty hot, and something smells like electricity, so I don't know if these batteries are just wearing out. I should be using deep cycle, I shouldn't be using starting batteries, but these were cheaper. We'll go ahead and push it across the level crossing here. It doesn't like these dirt-filled ruts. 
So it doesn't go through here very well on its own power. I didn't install a seat for this test trip, but you know what? I think I see a free seat right over there. So the downside of this new motor is it burns through those batteries a lot quicker, and I only have about a one mile range on the thing. We're gonna have to get some better batteries for this. I also should have brought a tow strap or a rope so I could just pull this back to the car. Otherwise, we could use this thing as a trailer or train car for one of my other rail devices. We might see that in another video. I'm not sure if this video will be out first or the other one, but uh, take a look for that. Cheap crummy tripods, now with all sorts of uses. Okay, the last bit back to where I parked is mostly downhill and we've let the batteries rest for a little bit. We're gonna hook them up again and see if we can get back to the car. All right, working much better now. The batteries just needed a little rest and the downhill grade doesn't hurt either. All right, so rail speeder version, the faster version, seems to work a lot better. Uh, I don't know how much weight that little motor will actually move around, but it definitely moves me, plus the batteries, plus a little bit of gear, and I think we might be able to go on some longer adventures with this. So stay tuned for that. We're going to get some better batteries. We're going to take this out on some other abandoned railroads, and we're going to have more adventures. So make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss those. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.